Hi, everybody. Kirsten DeFrancisco, Assistant Superintendent, Groton Dunstable Regional School District. And I am going to talk a little bit about student SMART goals as your focus area for your professional goal this year. Setting, helping students to set SMART goals is a great way to motivate them and engage them in their learning. And so we are going to start off by talking a little bit about that as I am presenting to you about student SMART goals. Remember that you are helping students to see that setting a goal and breaking that goal down into small steps will help them become more engaged in their learning. Setting your own SMART goals to model the work is also a great way to show students that this is a tool that can help them succeed. So how do you start? When you plan a professional goal, you're gonna watch something, read something, and write something, and you're watching something right now. So hopefully I can give you a little bit of my experience using SMART goals with students and really with anyone. Um, it has been that starting out small and having a class goal would be the way to model how to use SMART goals. I would also have students choose one subject area to create a SMART goal as they begin to practice with the tool and not necessarily having SMART goals in every single area. Uh, you know, that can be tricky. Uh, but, you know, starting the vocabulary and really establishing what the vocabulary around SMART goals are uh, is, a, is a great way to, to, to have help them to kind of dunk their toes in the water there. And then also setting up that class goal based on whatever rules that you may have in your classroom. So if the rule in your classroom is that, you know, you have, um, you're going to respect and make room for all voices, that talking about how you purposefully stopping and talking about how you're doing that and how you're making progress toward that and keeping a visual um, data record of how you're doing that with action steps and with um, accountability and check-ins can help model what students should be doing with their own SMART goals. Um, teach the acronym first with an example that has high interest level for your grade. So as you're thinking about your grade's developmental level and what they're interested in, teach that acronym with a, with a model or an exemplar for what S-M-A-R-T means. Um, don't get too caught up in the language at first. You know, you're giving them the language, uh, you're, you're introducing it to them. You can expect that as they start creating their first goals. You may not, they may not hit every category out of the park, but you know, there's obviously there, there's opportunity then for an entry point there for you to kind of lean in and say, okay, this is good. Specific might look a little bit different, but let's try this. Um, build in time for students to check in. So, you know, like anything else, a student is going to spend time on things that you carve out time for. So you might have a five minutes for reflection um, and that might be a specific time where students are checking in on their student learning goals. It might be at the beginning of a class, it might be at the beginning of the day. It might be a stop and break. Um, you know, you can you can think about when it would be best for your students to have that time. Um, and the first couple of times you use that reflection time, you actually model how you use it. And you may do that by sharing your own progress on your own SMART goal, or you might do it by stopping and sharing the progress on the class SMART goal. Read a little something. Read something that's small. Again, you don't need to know absolutely everything about the topic in order to take those first steps. Um, there's a SMART goal piece supported by Responsive Classroom in your presentation for PD, and I will be showing that to you in a moment. Um, there's also a packet that can help you structure a model, um, and I will show you that a little bit, model a lesson to teach about SMART goals. It's got some great pieces to it, so I will be showing that to you as well. And that will be things that you can read before you begin thinking about your um, setting your professional goal around student SMART goals. You're going to write a little something. Um, why student SMART goals? You know, why do you think this is one of the ways you will motivate and engage students this year? Uh, and writing about that is going to help you to really think about why is this the focus area for me? Is this something that I should be working with as my professional goal, and I can show you a template for that as well. Who are you checking in with? Join a think tank. There will be other teachers around you, other educators, I'm sure, that are choosing to use SMART goals with their students. How are they planning on creating action steps? What are they going to do to take their first steps in this focus area 
It's very helpful to collaborate with those around you. And so forming a think tank uh, would be a great thing for you to do as one of your action steps and also would serve as evidence of your working towards your goal. So in review, you're going to watch something, which you've already done. You've watched this vlog with me. Uh, you are going to read something, which I will talk to you about and show you in just a second. You will write about what you've watched and what you've read and really decide if this is a good focus area for you. You will check out the sample goal sheet that, that's provided, and I will, I will give you a quick peek at that before we end our vlog today. And then you're going to start writing your goal using the Goal Writing Assist template. You've got this. Student goals, teaching them how to use them is a wonderful way to engage and motivate students as you're working with them. So I am excited to see some of the work that is going to happen around um, this, the student goals. And I'm also going to show you your next step would be in your something to read. So when you think about goal setting, um, an ongoing method for channeling new energy, um, there is that is a piece that you can look at. And this is a responsive classroom piece. Actually, I'll open it for you here right now so that you can take a look at it. Um, it talks about setting SMART goals. It talks about being able to use them as a teaching tool. Um, it talks about them as communicating hope uh, and envisioning language for kids. So you can talk, you can see if that article uh, sparks some thoughts for you. Um, the something to read page also has um, some other suggestions that you might have that you might want to um, take a look at. You are also being given this investing students in the rules planner. This might be where you craft your student class goal. And you can do this all the way up through K to 12. This is not something that just you know, comes from responsive classroom. This is just a really good template I've found that I've used. It talks about the language as we talked a little bit about before. It gives spaces for kids to fill in SMART goals. It talks about the rules. So this would be a class goal. Um, and you could even change this to class goal. Rules that connect to my goal and why they connect. Um, you're going to talk about concrete behaviors, things that I know I'm going to do to help me reach my goal. Um, love this template. It really gives kids a chance to plan. What do I have to do? What are the small changes I'm going to see if this is working? Um, you can talk about setting that time frame. And how are you going to check in? So, um, of course, you would want to modify this depending on which grade level you're working with. And, you know, with littles, it's going to be look a little bit different and it might be pictures. And with um, older students, it may even be a little bit more specific. But this is a good place to start to take a look at what a template might look like. Um, as you're thinking about something to write about, you're thinking about why Smarkles? What's my entry point? What makes me excited about using SMART goals and what makes me nervous about using them? Because it's really good to think about the obstacles that you may have as well. So you can figure out what you're going to do to um, either avoid them or get through them. And then finally, we have a student SMART goal example planner. So in this particular planner, I have talked about why I think SMART goals is important. And the summary sentence that I have come up with is, SMART goals can help students to be engaged in their learning because they create clear expectations and help students see small successes along the way. And I extrapolated that from a lot of what I read. I'm going to explain in a sentence after I've done some brainstorming about how I would measure this. I will embed the use of SMART goals into my practice by teaching students how to write a SMART goal and provide students with monthly opportunities to create and revisit SMART goals in an area of their choice. There's the time bound piece. Achievable. I think it's achievable for me. It's going to be a go slow to go fast approach. It is very relevant. Um, not only is it relevant because it's something that, you know, has been in education for or in, in our practice for quite a few years, but it's also relevant because um, we're, we're finding ourselves really needing to figure out how to motivate and engage different kinds of learners, both at home and in school. And I think that setting SMART goals, you can do that no matter where you're learning. And then finally, the time bound piece. This is a year long goal that will be broken into month long segments. So now I'm going to put all of that together. I'm going to rewrite some of the sentences that I crafted. I'm going to have to help have them help me 
figure out what my goal will sound like. SMART goals can help students to be engaged in their learning because they create clear expectations and help students see small successes along the way. I will embed the use of SMART goals into my practice by teaching students how to write a SMART goal and provide students with the time to create and revisit a monthly SMART goal in an area of their choice. I create action steps. And some of the action steps you actually already have thought, have done. You've watched this video, this blog. You also have hopefully are going to go read some articles and do some writing. Those are all action steps toward creating a goal. Um, sample evidence could be your lesson for introducing your goals, your sample student goals, a conference schedule with students. Um, I always like to use, I don't know if I put it in this one, but I always like to use an inter, oh, I did, student interview about using SMART goals. And actually interviewing a student about their experience with using SMART goals in your classroom um, and uploading that as evidence is a really powerful way to show how you're using your, um, meeting your focus goals. So exciting stuff. I wish you the best of luck as you um, journey through SMART goals with students. Um, I know that they're going to be great and they will help to engage and motivate your students through the school year in that area of their choice. I look forward to further supporting you and to listening to conversations amongst those that have chosen this goal. I appreciate you watching. Go have fun with SMART goals.